You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County, Monday through Wednesday at 10 a.m. and Thursday at 11 a.m. Southern living at its best. Good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. Hope you guys are doing well today. I am doing, I am doing wonderful, wonderful. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Let me tell you something. I, it was so funny because I woke up this morning. I thought it was Wednesday. Um, and, and so I'm in the kitchen eating breakfast with my mom, right? Well, about to eat breakfast with my mom. And, um, and I realized, oh, crap, I got to go. I gotta go. I'm about to be late, but it's not. It's not Wednesday. It's Thursday. It's Thursday, guys. Beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. 48 degrees, going up to a high about 55. So we got a beautiful day. Not tomorrow. Not so beautiful. It's gonna rain. It's gonna be cold and rainy. But guess what? I'll be in the house doing absolutely nothing with my granddaughter Carter, who keeps me very, very, very busy. Like when she's home, I'm busy. So, but that's my that's my sugar bucket. That's what I call it. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well. It's almost the weekend. Um, you know, this my weekend starts today. But it, even though it starts today, I still got a lot to do this weekend. I got I got an um, event Saturday morning. Um, I got a couple events on Saturday. One Saturday morning, one Saturday afternoon. But Sunday, I'm going to relax and binge out on, I don't know, I got to find something new to binge out on. I was, I was told to check out you on Netflix. I heard that was really cool. And so... It, if it is, I'll probably binge out on that on, on Sunday. Got about 12 books I need to be reading. You know, we got all these book clubs we're going to start. We got a bunch of new TV networks we started, a bunch of new podcast networks we started. So I'm busy. That's why I need to take that time for myself. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's get on to some uh, horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. Today is January the 30th. Man, time is, you hear me, time is fine, waits for no one. In a couple of days, we're going to see the groundhog see a shadow. Who came up with that? Who, who came up with that? Did, 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 did the groundhog see a shadow? Really? I don't know. So if he sees a shadow, news, I, I don't know if we've ever had an accurate prediction that really came true. When the groundhog see a shadow, then you'll see a shadow probably on Monday sometime. But anyway, let's go ahead. Today is National Croissant Day. Now, isn't it strange that all of the days have something to do with food? This is terrible for us as trying to diet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yesterday was National, what, Blueberry Day or something? I don't know. Anyway, because there's National Croissant Day, so you like croissants, go on out there and get you one. Just get one. I know croissants are delicious. Like, I'm not really a bread eater, but I love croissants. All right, so let's go ahead and get on with our horoscope brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen for the day, January the 30th. And we're going to kick it off like we always do, and that's with Aries. Too much talk will lead to disputes. Get on with your life. Look into ways that you can make extra cash. That's right. Listen, Aries, it's all about making the extra money. You got to get some extra coins going on. You might want to do some things. So look into some ways to make some extra cash. Now, here's the thing. If you're looking into ways to make extra cash, make sure it's legitimate, right? And if it's legitimate, it's going to take some time. Because no quick, no quick, get rich quick. There are none. You want to get rich quick? Yeah, that's not it. It's, it's probably going to be illegal or it won't work. So think about that. Taurus, minor minor accidents are likely if you take risk. Don't make a move. Your confusion can cause has caused a dilemma and you are best to back away and reassess the situation. You may be sensitive concerning friends and their situation. I don't know what that means, sensitive. I know you're sensitive on the good side, sensitive on the bad side. I'm not really sure, but um, you're going to be a little sensitive today, Taurus. Taurus is not that sensitive either. Gemini, avoid any hassle you might find in difficult, uh, avoid any hassles. You might find it difficult to control your emotions. Oh, Lord, Gemini is going to be emotional today. Ooh, you may want to take a serious look at your goals and objectives. Listen, I know we're still in the first part of the year. We're still in the first month. Technically, we all, two days will be out. But you still might want to go back and look, look at your goals. I haven't even done my... Um, I haven't even done any resolutions. I haven't even written my goals down, which is unlike me, but I'm going to probably do that this week. I'm going to have some time on Sunday before I start binging on TV. Cancer, you will be extremely sensual. Mm -hmm. Okay, Cancer, watch out. Now, don't be too sensual. Get a baby. Take precautions and don't take any risks. <laughs> don't take any risks while you're being sensual. Um, and be, be cautious. 
You can make excellent career moves if you are open to the opportunities that exist. Difficulties with your mate may lead to isolation. Now, you're going to be sensual, right? But you're going to have a problem with your mate. Who are you going to be sensual with? I don't know about that one. <laughs> Take precautions, whoever it's with. Maybe you're just going to be sensual with yourself. Remember, um, I was about to say something. That was like sexual chocolate. Sensual chocolate. I think that was Eddie Murphy doing But I think it was sexual chocolate. I just, I don't know, that just came to my mind. It's crazy, right? Leo, curb or cut out that bad habit you've been meaning to do something about. You can't lose today unless you get involved in gossip or overwork, uh, overwork to the point of exhaustion. Sports, physical fitness programs, exercise in general will make you feel better and show some pretty quick results. Listen, no gossip in the day, Leo. It's not even like you to gossip anyway. Leo, Leos, I know they're not gossipers. And I know a few of them. I'm talking about the women. I don't know about the men. But I, I know the women and I know they're not really gossipers. I was just talking about that earlier. Like the Leos, I know they're not really gossipers. Pisces, on the other hand. No, I'm just kidding. Ooh, we tend to gossip a little bit. Just a little bit. Tiny bit. Virgo, get them to pitch in. If you need help, hold on. Your time will come. Your energy will be high. All right. Okay, Virgo. Get them to pitch in. If you need help, hold on. Your time is on the way. Your time is coming, baby. Your energy is going to be high. Yes, it is. All right, listen. I'm going to go to the song. I'll be right back after this song to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrology and Micah Thyssen. You're listening to the Good Morning Good Net Show. <laughs>
Welcome back, welcome back to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. And we're going to pick it up with Libra. You should get involved in competitive sports today. This may not be a day to get involved in risky joint financial ventures. Try to be as mellow as possible. Listen, today's not the day for you to start investing in nothing, Libra, financially. So don't do it. Scorpio, sometimes spent with, this, with that special someone should be your intent. You might want to spend some time by yourself in order to decide exactly how you feel. Problems with colleagues are likely. You know, you want to spend the time with that special someone, but first you need to know how you feel. Because if you don't know how you feel, you can't help them. You can't even you can't even create something positive. You're not sure about your feelings today, Scorpio. So spend some time by yourself first, and then spend some time with that special someone. You need to, be, you need to have clarity, though, when you do that. Sagittarius, put financial speculation with family members or friends back on the burner for now. It's time to reevaluate your motives. You should put in some extra hours developing that creative idea you have. All right, it's time to reevaluate your motives. If your motives are all wrong, sad, it's not going to work. I'm just going to tell you. Anytime we do anything with the wrong intentions, it always backfires. It may not backfire immediately, but it backfires. And you're like, now, how did that happen? Because your intentions was wrong from the get-go. So check yourself on that one, Sag. Capricorn, try to be reasonable. You really can't do anything to change matters today. There could be an opposition or a temper tantrums on your home front. Listen, the one thing you can't do is can't change things that you can't change. So don't even try to bother with it today, Capricorn. Just let it let it flow. Let it go. It, it has to work out the way it's supposed to. So you can't change it, so don't even worry yourself with it. Aquarius, you will be extremely receptive to new and progressive methods at work. Your ability to ferret uh, out secret information will lead you to an inside scoop or on an amazing financial deal. Listen, Aquarius, you're going to get the inside scoop on something, you need to share it with me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's your, it's your business. Try to visit friends and relatives you don't <laughs> get to see very often. So you're going to get some information today. You're going to get some secret information that can lead to an inside scoop on an amazing, it's an amazing financial deal. No, for real, I need to know. Let me know. Listen, don't count me with some bootlegs. I'm going to do my research. All right. And my fellow fish, Pisces. You can make a huge difference to children if you are able to put yourself in their shoes. Purchases will be worth it and they will last a long time. You need to sit back and enjoy. Ain't that the truth? The last part right there, you need to sit back and enjoy. I know. I know. I, I don't enjoy as much as I need to. I really don't. I'm trying though. You know, I, I get so caught up in what I'm doing to I just I just kinda lose it sometimes. I do. Let me tell you something. It's all kind of deadly. Okay, so I think I, I did I talk about this yesterday? I don't even know. But I'm talking about it again today because they was like, uh, President Trump shut it down. Like, nobody's coming back into America from China, right? Because they got all these different viruses floating around right now. But here's the thing I don't even know if I talked about this yesterday. But I was, we went to lunch. No, I didn't talk about it because this came up at lunch. It was hilarious. It was, it was, it was funny, but it was like, uh oh, wait a minute now. So we went to lunch yesterday. Me, myself, me, me, Georgette. And my daughter and the baby. So they, my daughter came to the studio yesterday. We went to lunch. We went to this um, this Asian restaurant. Now the guy who worked there, he owned the restaurant. He was hilarious. He was really, really funny. So he comes to the table and he's telling us about, you know, he went to this uh, Chinese marketplace, like a grocery store. He said, go into the grocery store and everybody that had on masks, you know, because they, they're, they're scared they're going to get the, what is it? Uh, coronavirus, coronavirus. So he's like, he walked in the door. He saw these people walking around with masks on. He left and turned around and came out the store. And he's like, man, because these Asians, these Chinese people, they eat everything. They eat everything. He's like, they're eating bats. And uh, so we had heard that the, the coronavirus came from bats, right? So he said, by the way, I'm not, I'm not Chinese. I'm, I'm from Malaysia. It was, he, he was so funny. Like, he should have been a comedian. He was so funny and so down to earth. He had us cracking up. And, but the thing was, we sitting there eating, right? And then he made a statement. He, I don't know. He said we were eating something, right? He said, but don't worry about it because everything tastes like chicken. It was, he had us crying. But I'm sitting there saying to myself, you right because I'm eating chicken right now. I don't know what I'm eating. It, but it was good. It was good. But anyway, I said all that to say that there's just so many different viruses that's floating around. So, this is a... Um, this is a story I got out of the Daily Post. Said, a deadly virus is spreading from state to state and has infected 15 million Americans so far. It's the flu. Do, okay, so do you remember the flu being this deadly? Like, think about that for a second. 
you know, they got the coronavirus, you got the flu going around there. I mean, it is correct. Like, what is happening? I can't even. 15 million piece, people across America. Yep. Yep. The, 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 the flu has infected 15 million Americans across the country and killed more than 8,200 people this season alone. 8,000 people, over 8,000 have died from the flu. And you got to say to yourself, when has a, it's a, it's a new pandemic. Like, it's crazy. When has so many people died from the flu? Like, you used to drink some orange juice, get on the color, throw on some Vicks, you know, sweat it out. You can't do that now. My nephew, my nephew, he was home a few weeks ago. He was home for, I think it was his birthday. And, um, this was a couple of weeks ago. And he, um, he had, he started feeling sick. Started feeling sick at home. And went to the ER. And they told him, oh, just go home and take some Tylenol. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll be okay. And he was fine for a couple of days, right? So the day he was leaving to go to the airport, my brother said he came in the room, was talking to him, and just passed out and hit the oh. floor. And my brother, like, oh, had a heart attack. Scared him so bad, he had to call an ambulance. He just passed completely out. Now, what pissed me off is that he had went to the ER, mm-hmm. and they called it themselves, tested him for the flu, right? Sent him home, so he didn't have the flu. And in, in, in fact, he did have the flu. And had he got on that plane and came, because he, he's a coach at Mississippi State, had he got on the plane and went back to Mississippi, who knows what would have happened, but God is good. Because God, he was on his way, 6 o'clock in the morning, get on the plane, sitting there brushing his teeth, was talking to my brother, and passed out. Completely out, unconscious. Oh and they had to rush him to the hospital, and he had the flu. Now, he had been walking around there for like four, three or four days. They had went to the ER, they told him it wasn't the flu. Go home and take some Tylenol, because he was aching. And he had the flu. So you got to be very careful. Like, it's just so much going on right now. You got to protect yourself. Wash your hands. I'm almost going to say run from people. You see it with masks on. I'm, let me tell you something. I was so set on going to Arizona, right? I was so set. Like, my birthday's in a few weeks. And I was so set on going to Arizona. <coughs> and now I'm afraid to get on the plane. Because I don't know who's on the freaking plane. Like, I don't even want I barely want to leave the house. That's a shame, right? I know. I'm supposed to be walking by faith. I know. <laughs> Walk by faith and not by sight. I know all the evangelists out there said my faith is weak. Yep. You are absolutely right. I didn't realize how weak it was because I was scared to get on the plane. I've been talking about Sedona a whole year. Because that's, that's my plan to go for my birthday. They told me, oh, it's in Arizona. I'm like, really? Ooh. So I got to fly to Arizona to get to Sedona, right? Because that is where Sedona is in Arizona. Yes. Yeah, I started to freak out. Like, ooh, maybe not. Maybe not Arizona this year. Maybe, maybe, maybe I just go to Lake Oconee. I don't know. Ugh, it scared me. Yep, she a little face. I listen. I can call my own self out. I don't need y'all to call me out. Anyway, it's a lot of viruses going on right now. And it's just, it's the strangest thing because um, you you want to ask yourself, where is all this stuff coming from? You know, but the people over in China eat freaking bats. Why would you want to eat a bat? Like, they, they showed the lady. It was disgusting. She was eating bat soup. They showed her biting a little bat arm. Oh, yeah. It was gross, G. Oh, I hate bats. Oh, girl. you need, she, got, oh, they, no. she got a bowl of soup with a little bat in there. And no, she got it up. Right. And she, yeah. Oh, I seen it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, who want to eat bat? Why would you eat? So, the man said yesterday, he had a nice, like, they eat everything over there. Everything wild in, in China. I was like, yeah, mommy not to go to China eat nothing but seafood. Ooh. Cause I don't know what I'm eating. Seafood. I don't even know if I want to eat a noodle. Might be some kind of worm made them cooked up. Anyway, let's keep it moving. Whew. The Georgia horse racing bill draws criticism from religious group. That makes sense. It's gambling. You know that would make sense that they they would object because it's gambling. I don't know how how much um their rebellion is gonna get, but so anyway. Religious organizations and other opponents um, opponents of legalizing gambling dominated a Georgia Senate committee hearing meeting yesterday on legislation to let voters decide whether to bring paramutal betting on horses horse racing to the state. Mm. For seven years, Brandon um, Senator Brandon Beach, a uh, Republican from Alpharetta, has been the driving force behind a proposed constitutional amendment legalizing horse racing. What? He went okay. Let me hold on now. The underlining. Um, the under an underlining enabling bill accompanying the constitutional change calls for the construction of up to 
three racetracks in Georgia that will be a part of a mixed-use development. One track in Metro Atlanta will require minimal investment $250 million, while two tracks outside of the metro region will require at least $125 million. Um, Beach was uh, Beach has consistently pitched legalizing horse racing in Georgia as a way to boost the economies of rural communities by creating a job. Yeah, that's right, creating a job. They he call it a, a job, uh, creating equi- equine industry with breeding and hay farms. That's true. That, well, you, if you look at it from economic, you know, economical standpoint, that makes sense because now you're gonna have jobs. Breeding horses, somebody got they got to eat the hay, so it makes sense. Plus, you got all this the traffic that's gonna come in there to the concession stands and all those different things. So it's gonna be a bunch of jobs. So yeah, but the religious group I'm sure is like no, cause it's gambling. If you want to have breeding uh, a breeding industry, it is essential. Um, you have racetracks. Beach told members of the Senate Economic Development and Tourism Committee, we have no incentives to breed horses here. Well, that's true. But opponents said racetracks will inevitably lead to casinos, which will increase crime and foster gambling addiction. Let me just hear, oh, hear you, hear you. Here's a news, a news report. People are already addicted to gambling. Probably half the church. Cut it out, man. If they go into the store and play a picket and a scratch off, that's gambling. These people kill me. Like, get real. You know how you do you know what have you ever okay, let me let me just let me just put this out there. Have you ever been to the casinos in Cherokee? Right? It's not that many people in Cherokee. Guess where those people are coming from? Georgia. Guess what that money is leaving from? Georgia. Go through there. It's like people live in the hills in Cherokee. In the mountains, you don't see nothing but mountains and streams. So and they are not, no jobs. So they're not the ones spending the money at the casinos in Cherokee. Take a visit. It's the people. From, let me tell you something. I met a woman last year. This woman said that her friend was starting a transportation company to take people from Georgia to Cherokee. And she was working with her part-time to learn the routes because they were going to build this into a big business. Do you know how many people are going to leave Georgia to go to Cherokee and drop their money? So... My husband loves going to Cherokee. If, and if they're not going to Cherokee, they're going over the state line to Alabama, which is a lot nicer for me. I, I like, I ain't gonna lie, I like Alabama Casino better. I went to Wind Creek, I think it was. I really liked it over there. Um, but here's the thing. I get it. I don't know about the crime part, because I don't know how much crime is in Cherokee, because if, you, if you've ever been to Cherokee, the outside of the casino ain't nothing happening. But some mountains and some fishing. So, I don't know how much crime the casino... Because when people go to the casino, they're not... They're in the casino. They're not standing outside on the street. So, what crime? What, they'll try to rob the casino? What crime? They robbed, the, they robbed down here. Let me tell you something. When I moved back to Georgia, I the first time I moved back down here, they robbed the bank. I was like, who walks in and robs a bank and leaves out the bank with the money? Like, that sounds like something off TV. They rob something all the time. And there is no casino. So, if the casinos and the racetrack is going to bring in more money for people to be able to live so they can stop robbing folks and stealing stuff and breaking into people's houses and their cars, you know why? Because they won't have the time because they'll be busy working. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Think sometimes. I don't think people think. Anyway, that's my soapbox edition of this whole story. I, 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 I do believe that, though. Um, those casinos and racetracks are coming. I don't think anybody's gonna be able to stop them because if you if they were able to count up the amount of money that leaves the state of Georgia going to these other casinos, they would be surprised at how much we're actually losing because of it. Because people and stop talking about people don't gamble. There are people who have addiction to scratch offs. I know a couple, straight up addicted. It's ridiculous. They need to have that. That's a problem. You walk into a store. You walk into a store, right? And you spent five dollars a day on pickets. On I'm gonna say scratch offs. Somebody bought a thirty dollars scratch off. I was like, for real? Not me. But there are people that do it. So you don't think that's an addiction? Five dollars scratch off every day. That's like buying a cup of coffee. A coffee is addictive. So that's thirty five dollars for the week that just went into scratch offs. That's a hundred and forty dollars for the month. 
that went into scratch off. You don't think a lot of times people can't even afford to lose that money, but they they trying to get that dollar in a dream. That's that's New York saying all you need is a dollar in a dream. Yeah, you need God and a dollar in a dream. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyway, I'm going to a song, and I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the rundown of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Stay tuned. Lawrenceville is going high tech, y'all. Yes, it is. So Lawrenceville recently announced a new destination marketing campaign and separate website, Microsite, aimed at promoting the city's uh, shopping, dining, and special events. Yes, it's called the DLT, the DTL, Downtown Lawrenceville. How cute is that? Who is the marketing person over that? Okay, Lawrenceville, I hear Alville doing the thing. All right, high tech Lawrenceville. Anyway. The DTL will be the new focal point of the campaign and a new microsite, www.downtownlawrencevillega.com. The city will also utilize the Instagram handle at, at the DTL. All right. So, okay, so y'all kind of bit, right? Y'all kind of bit? I'm going to put that in my show, though. Hashtag DT, the DTL, like the ATL. I get it. I get it. I got, I got the bite. Yeah, we, I got it. it was, anyway. Um, we spent the, the past several years following the city's comprehensive plan for the growth and development of the city of Lawrenceville, said Chuck Warrington, city manager. Our economic development efforts have been highly successful, and we are now ready to shift our market efforts to more destination-driven focus. I'm going to have to bite off of y'all. I'm going to have to shift my marketing. I like it. Listen, listen, I'm, I love marketing. 
Um, exciting things are happening in our city with completion of the South Lawn development and the Lawrenceville Lawn renovations, the addition of the Bicentennial Plaza, the College Corridor Project, and the new Performing Arts Center, Boutique Hotel, and Parking Deck um, that will soon grace downtown. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, we got a lot, of, lot going on in Lawrenceville, like a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, y'all gotta excuse me. <coughs> I don't know why that happens. It happens every now and then. Can't help it. I'm live. Anyway, the microsite will contain update, updated events, um, event information from the city, Gwinnett Historic Courthouse, uh, Lawrenceville Female Cemetery, or Aurora Theater, and other business partners. Users will be able to search for shopping, dining, and event locations and dates. All right, the DTL. I know that's the truth. Lawrenceville will kick off the official event season with the St. Patty's Day on Perry, March the 14th. The event uh, information updates and even pop-up events will be shared with public through the microsite. I like nice. that. Yeah, nice. That's very nice, right? So, okay, so y'all might hear me talking to my this because Georgia is in, in the studio this morning. She's doing my production. Listen, I told y'all, we trying to we trying to do big things in 2020. Like, we have so many things on the horizon for you guys. You have no idea. Because, one, um, media is strong, right? Media and marketing. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm excited about Lawrenceville and the DTL. Mm -hmm. Media is strong, and podcasting is strong, video is strong. So we have a lot planned for this year. We have a lot planned for business owners to, to help them get exposure. When I rebranded the company from ABK Media Group to Noise Media, my goal was to make sure that I was in a position to help small business owners um, get the exposure that they could that they they could use to grow their businesses. So, podcasting is one way, mm -hmm. video and internet television is another way. Content marketing in general. I just had a conversation with my daughter this morning, and she was she was asking me. She's like, "Listen, I'm trying to just figure out like the best way for me to market this business." I said, "Listen, you need to be content driven." Because what she does is she styles. She she's a, she's like a stylist, like right. So she helps you get. She helps you use what's in your closet to create these amazing different styles. And her her show is called the Budget Boutique, and um, her show is called the Budget Boutique. So she is, um, she helps you like dress yourself on a budget. And I was telling her you got to be content heavy. Like that's where it is. Like right now, being content heavy is a way to get your business out there. And that's why when I when we when I rebranded. From ABK to Noise Media, it was all about helping companies make some noise. A lot of people don't like to talk about themselves, therefore they don't promote yeah. themselves, right? And so if you don't, if you're in business and you're not promoting yourself, nobody knows you're in business. You have a hobby. You have a, a hobby that's probably draining your pockets because that's normally what happens. Like you have this business, you're doing a whole lot of busy work, but none of that work is focused on how to grow your business. It's like checking your emails and and uh, um, uh, getting on conference calls, and none of that stuff is money-driven, right? And I'm not saying be like a, a lover of money, but if you're in business, you got to make money. So she was asking me what was, you know, what should she do? And I said, you need to be content-heavy because what you do is very visual. Clothes, mm -hmm. clothes are very visual. People need to see how it looks. So she's doing a really great job with putting the outfits together. Now she needs to transfer it over to podcasting and video, and then from there we're going into Internet TV. So she's launching her own you know, I'm going to launch a TV network for her, but but here on the show, um, I, right now, I'm doing the show. Georgina's producing it right now. Normally, I produce this part of the show myself, but she's producing me this morning, so I'm sitting on the other side of the room versus where I normally sit to produce the show, and she's sitting in the producer seat. I'm sitting over here on the, on the, air, on the talent seat over here where me and my guests will be sitting when we start interviewing next week, so we got some interviews coming down the pike. Um, we got a lot of stuff. Like we got a way for you to, to get your stuff on, on our TV networks. And when I say networks, that's got an S on them. Because we got one for pretty much everybody that we're going to be launching. Along with, along with our magazine. Just a lot of stuff going on. So a lot of good stuff. Like, a lot of, like if you are afraid to put yourself out there in, in, your, in your business, we're not afraid to put you out there. We realize that our strength is helping people uh, show up. That's, that's what our strengths are. Yep. Right, we, cause, and, but when you look at look at everybody, look at coaches, right? Coaches will coach you, push you, but they won't co push themselves. They won't coach themselves. But that's because we we are people who like to help people. We now we're scared to help ourselves. We'll help you, 
that's just who we are. So we, I realized my strength is helping people create that visibility. So I have launched, I'm about to launch all these different platforms and opportunities for people to do that. But anyway, I just wanted to share that because you hear me like talking to somebody, I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> JJ is on the other side of the room. And it's so funny because I'm, I'm using a different mic today. I have a ton of micro. I have microphones, all kinds of microphones. You, I'm like a gadget chick for real. So in the studio, I have three different kind of mics. Well, I have two different kind of mics. The one that I normally do the show on sits on the on the production side over there because I'm sitting on that side mostly because I'm in the, in the studio by myself. And then we have three on the other side of the room. We have one in the closet, <laughs> and then we don't take. I got two, two, three sets of portable different kind of portable mics. Like it's crazy, but anyway. These mics that I'm talking on right now are so sensitive. So I can't wait to see what this episode sounds like because I've never recorded live on them. This is my first day recording live. Now, the one that's on my desk, on the production side over there, it's really good. I like it. But this one right here is so sensitive. It picks up everything. And I could have sworn when I bought them, they were condensing mics where they don't pick up everything. But Georgette, you probably heard her. She's across the room. And I only got one mic on. They're so sensitive, so I'm sitting up here like trying not to cough and sneeze and rattle paper and you know that my Bluetooth is ringing. I'm sure that's inside the show, so if you hear it, that's the Bluetooth because the mics are really sensitive. Um, but anyway, let's keep it moving. Let's keep on to some news you can use. Yep. So yeah, Lawrenceville has a lot going on. I really like. So I don't know who the branding officer is over at the county, but the DTL love it. Mm-hmm. I will be using that in my hashtags because I put hashtags inside my um. Description for the show because I live in Lawrenceville. So anything I can do to promote where I live, I will be doing it. I love it. Hashtag, listen, hashtag y'all, the DTL. Yes, I love it. Downtown Lawrenceville, I love it. Go to the website if you want more information about what's going on. Um, DowntownLawrencevilleGA.com. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right, the DTL. Hmm, about to get a name for ourselves. I'm kidding. We already had a name. <laughs> <laughs> We already had a name, but I like that. That's sexy, the DTL. Mm-hmm. So the Gwinnett Commission gets transit plan. We'll decide if it makes the ballot. All right, you know we've been we've been struggling with this transit thing. Whether voters whether, whether voters get to cast their ballots this year on transit expansion in Gwinnett County is now up to the county commissioners. Um, a group of residents tasked with reviewing the county's transit plan agreed to pass the recommendations on. To the elected officials, the commissioners will review the proposal and decide if and when the voters could again go to the polls for the transit vote after the last attempt to expand public transportation in the county fell last March. So we don't know what we're going to do with that. We will know, though. Yeah, we will know. It was rejected last year. You know, it's always a lot of talk about it. It was rejected for a bunch of different reasons. And so now they're working on trying to figure out how to do it again. Now, what was weird, though... Lawrenceville did a micro transit pilot last year. For me, I think all of the towns need to look at it. And they said it was very successful. Um, but I understand what they're trying to do. They're saying they're trying to build this, this bridge between um, Gwinnett and Atlanta. But they did a micro transit plan. They said it went very well. So I think until we can figure out the big scheme, the big, the big, the big scheme of what we're trying to do, go back and revisit what worked in Snellville. If the microtransit plan mm-hmm. worked, can we put that into Cuba? Can we put that in Buford? Can we put that in Norcross? Can we put it in, mm-hmm. you know, Duluth? Can we put it in Lawrenceville? I think you should go back and look at that. At least for the meantime, because I don't, I really don't think, by the time we get this whole MARTA thing out the door, we'll have a million two people. We already yes. have the 980,000. So by the time we figure it all out, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to have a million people. And we, and it's gonna be worse. Yes. Like it's really gonna be worse. I don't even. I don't know. I think it's, you know, so funny because I I think about when you have to go to these meetings and sitting in on these meetings. You want to do one thing. You got twelve people counting against you. It's like what in the world? Or you got six and five. Now we trying to get everybody on the same page. It's, it's That's terrible. terrible. It's very difficult. I've been in meetings when I was um. Ooh, I was working with this organization, and I'm never going to forget this because I was thinking about it. It was a political or- organization, and I was thinking about, well, maybe I'll run for something. You know, I want to be community-oriented. I want to get out there and fight for the people. And I was in a room with about probably seven to eight women, and we were trying to do, to do something, <laughs> but we couldn't get past the fact that we couldn't figure out where to put the comma in the sentence. 
to the point where they were having arguments. And I was sitting up there saying, you have got to be kidding me. Like, and we did this for about three hours. To the point where I think the vice president quit. They were arguing about the, the construct of the sentence, where to put the comma. And I was like, this can't be real. Like, this is not what goes on behind closed doors, is it? Because if this is what happened behind closed doors, count me out. Because I'm that person who, like, listen, let's get it done. Like, this is ridiculous. Put it on out there. Okay, so who's really going to be looking at the sentence that hard to say, well, you didn't have a comma there, so we didn't know the pause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was sitting up there going... I'm so I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm, I can see me, I was sitting by the window, my back was to the window, and I'm sitting there looking at the women, like, and they were, we had like a whiteboard, we had sticky, sticky notes, we had like a, uh, a easel, it was crazy, and the whole time we were like stuck on where to put the sentence, the comma in the sentence. And one lady said to me, because you have to make sure it's said the right way, because if it's not, I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm sitting there like, I'm, I'm a newbie, so maybe I'm, maybe it's me. Like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm new to this whole thing. These are seasoned politicians here. You know, who am I? I'm just a podcaster. You know, what do I know? You know, but I was like, yeah, this one I'm going to have to deal with. Count me out. I'll just stick to being a community activist via podcasting. <laughs> That's my thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll stick to, stick to what I know and do. There is no... Well, I probably should put some commas in some of the stuff I say. It's kind of like run on. <laughs> I probably should put a comma. I probably should pause, right? Yeah, I didn't, so it's too late. You can't go back and erase that and do it over. Because you know how many times we erased that stuff and did it over and rewrote? Yeah, you can't. I done said it. It's gone. It's in the past anyway. Hey. It's a comma. Comma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Gwinnett Middle School showcases program projects at Georgia Tech. Go ahead, little kid. Tell us some these kids are beasts. You hear me? I was I did the um the the um the, the, the Gwinnett Youth Commission had an event last week. It was the Gwinnett Youth Commission, it was Guide and then it was another group called I think Yappa. Those kids are the bomb. They are little masters, they're not playing games, they are politically conscious. They have a voice. They want to say what they need to say. They let me tell you something. That's gonna be the generation. That's gonna that's gonna be the generation like my mother's generation. Like my generation, all we focus on was like how to start this business. That was our thing, right? The generation behind us, which is the millennials, they just want to just. They just I don't. Know, I don't really want to talk about them. That's just a whole other group of beasts. But this generation right here. They want to fight. They want to organize. They want to make stuff happen. They, they're not playing. Right? And when I sat there and talked to this 17-year-old girl named Trinity, I was like, yeah, this is the generation right here. They they got they got more than just their, they got technology to fight with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My mother was back there walking with Dr. Martin Luther King, and they would fight for civil rights. They had themselves. They had to lock arm in arm and walk yeah. side by side. These kids got cell phones and, and the young girl said it was hilarious it wasn't hilarious but it was it was eye-opening for her right she says how do we get our message out so it was about 10 kids at the table and two adults she said how it was me it was three adults it was me and two other people at the table she said we just want to know how do we get our message out so i said to her do you have a cell phone she said yes I asked the other little girl do you have a cell phone she said yes I asked the other kid do you have a cell phone she said yes i said that's how you get your message out mm -hmm. and they all looked at me like Wow, like that's how you get it out because every one of you at this table has a, a has a cell phone. That's so how they you, connect. Though. That's how they connect. So they're and they're not playing. Like she was dead serious about it. nobody's listening to us. They tell us to take a seat at the table, and then when we sit to the table, they won't listen to us. And I was like, okay, like she mean business, right? So I'm sitting there like, wow. So these kids are not playing. Is what I what I'm saying. They they're about they're about making changes. They're about making mm -hmm. moves. That's the that's the gen. What is it called the Gen Z? Mm -hmm. Gen Z is not playing. They're not, a, they're not afraid. And they're not afraid to do and, it. And they have something that they want to say. The millennials, huh, they're cross between everybody. They don't want to drive cars. They don't want to go get food. They don't want to go get food. They want to order everything. They don't want to wash dishes. I don't know. I don't know about that group. I'm still trying to figure them out, which I just don't have the time. I'm going to leave that to the experts. Anyway, the Luth Middle School 8th grade, uh, grader Ethan Pickle holds his thumb to the sensor that detects his body heat. 
trying mm-hmm. to demonstrate that his vice, um, he and his classmates develop in, in deeper Pindalars and Depa Pindal. I'm messing up this man's name. Depa Pindalaris. Pindawars. Pindawars class. I guess that's his teacher. Anyway, as a sensor, he sell LEDs flash, uh, flash and read, your baby is still in the car. Mm. Wow. See what I'm saying? Wow. He's in the eighth grade. So there's wow. a sensor that he that they have created mm. that will alert you that you left the baby in the car. Now, I'm not going to even get into how could you leave the baby in the car? How could you just forget the baby is in the car? You put the baby in the car. I'm not going to get into that because I don't know. But anyway... They have a sensor that heats up, it has an LED on it that flashes and reads, your baby is still in the car. Mm. They are about to be wow. rich. Save a bunch of lives. They're about to be rich. They're about to save a lot of baby lives. Because listen to that, it just made the news on the Gwinnett Daily Post, because that's where I'm reading it from. I'm talking about it. My show is syndicated in 100 countries. Who else is going to know about this? That's what I'm saying. So when Pickle... Eric Zhu and Daniel Wong um, were researching social uh, societal problems to men with technology. They noticed one tragic but preventable problem, baby mm-hmm. and animal heat, car, hot car deaths. Yep. That's, especially down here. It's hot down here, y'all. It gets hot in the summertime. Like, I don't want to sit in the car without the air conditioning being on. I don't, I don't like to leave the house in the summertime, to be honest with you. Like, our air conditioning run 24-7. We never turn it off in the summertime. That's what I told my brother. He was like, well, y'all, y'all, y'all never turn it off? like, never. Like, it just runs. Like, it'll go on when the house get kind of cool, which is almost never because it's so hot. But anyway, this is a problem that is overlooked mm-hmm. because you see it in the news, but nothing is done about it, Pickle said. Every single one, every single one could have been prevented. Every one of them. Mm-hmm. The poor little dogs in the car, mm-hmm. the babies in the car. I mean, it's crazy. The Duluth Middle School um, students... Program the wow. sensor, which is designed to hang on the seat facing a baby's car seat. It is designed to detect changes in the temperature, which notifies someone carrying a receiver that the car has been breached has has reached a has breached a safe temperature range. It also responds to movement, so hopefully a baby or pet trapped in a car is saved before that even that danger even happens. You see what I'm saying? This is mm-hmm. an eighth grader. Wow, the eighth Powerful. grader. That's powerful. Yeah. I'm telling you, these kids are not playing games. Technology is amazing. Yeah. I have to speak at Code Ninja in, in March. Um, Code Ninja is a school owned by a couple, the Rayum couple. And I interviewed Vivian Rayum on the show of, about a month or two ago. And they opened up Code Ninja in Snellville. And what it does is you take your kids there and you teach them how to code. The same kind of coding that these kids just did is what they learned a bunch, along with a bunch of other things, robotics and all kinds of stuff. I'm telling you, these things make a difference. So I have to go there and speak. And the reason she asked, you know, she wanted me to speak is because, <clears throat> yes, I do podcasts, and you may not think it's technical, but it's technical when my podcast is on Alexa. Alexa is artificial intelligence. That makes it very technical. When you can say Alexa. Open Good Morning Gwinnett, and she plays it. I, I demonstrated that to someone yesterday here at the studio inside a Paradigm Hub work hub, <clears throat> another podcaster, and I demonstrated to her how my podcast is everywhere, and she was absolutely amazing. I demonstrated it twice yesterday, and people were like, oh, crap, that is so cool. But that's, that's what, that's what we're, that's, this is the day and time we're living in, so technology can change things, but you need bright minds with bright ideas. And that's what this group right here is saying. They're saying we got bright minds, bright ideas. We want to be the solution generation. I don't know if that's what they're going to call them, but I believe that's the generation that we're raising right now. This is the, We don't want to talk about the problem because the problems are there. What's the solution? I should have been in that generation. True, I'm a solution true. generation. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a help that generation because I'm a solution-oriented person. So these kids are not playing games. All right, listen, we're going to a song. I'll be right back after this next song to bring you more of the rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Let's see what you can do. You think you're so damn smooth. Through. 
So let's see what you can do I use a different microphone. Um, I don't use a mixer because I don't have to. It's just me and the in my studio, my my digital studio. So it's just me and the microphone. I don't have to use headphones. But Judette has it, so she has to listen to the music and be able to listen to the mixer so that she can make sure that the microphones are on because I'm using the other mics right now. So so when you're thinking about podcasts, and these are all the things you have to think about, right? When you're doing it yourself, all I need is a microphone and a computer and my playlist. And my, what I'm talking about for the day. But because she's on the other side right now, she has to listen to me talk through the mics. She has to listen to the music playing in another head. So she got like two headphones in her head, two different ones. One's listening to the microphone, one's listening to the music. I can't hear anything. I can kind of hear the music just a little bit. So that was a blooper. So she gave me the finger, and I thought she would say talk, but I really wasn't supposed to talk yet. So, so she's, bad. She, she's in her bag. But it's okay, because we're working this thing out. Because... As we move along and we're doing more production for people, we need to make sure that it works right because there are a lot of people who really want to want to start a podcast and they just don't know where to start. They're afraid of the microphones. They don't want to be sitting in the room by themselves. See me, I can talk by myself. That's like, they, they say when you answer yourself, you're crazy, right? <laughs> I, don't, I can talk all day long by myself as long as I don't answer myself back. However, I tend to do that every now and again. I used to say now and then. But my daughter goes now and again. Now I don't know which one is right, so I kind of, I use kind of both of them. Now, now and then, and now and again. I was like, oh, now and again, huh? Never heard that before. My family said now and then. You know, I'm from Georgia. I'm, I'm an original peach. Yes, I was raised on the bricks in Newark, New Jersey, but I'm really a peach for real. I still got my peach roots. I do. I do. But anyway, you know, as we move along down this path um, of creating this show. You're gonna 
You're going to hear from some amazing people. You're going to see us change and grow right in front of your eyes. And that's just a part of what we do. I could easily record this show offline and upload it every day. I don't want to do that. You know, there are some podcasters um, who feel like, you know, live is rough. It is rough because I have bloopers. You know, my nose stops up in the middle of the show like it is right now. And I'm trying to breathe while I talk to you. Like crazy stuff. Like, like why is that happening? I have no idea. But it happens. So I have to try to breathe and talk to you all at the same time. But that's what makes this show authentic. Right? You get me real and raw four days out of the week. Ain't no fluff in you because I'm sitting here talking to you and stuff is happening as we talk. But that's what makes it fun for me. That's what makes me want to get up every morning because I can come here and talk to you live. I don't have to pre-record and I don't have to go through the editing process and I don't have to wait till the editor gets back to me. And I don't have, I don't have to do anything. I just get up, come in my studio, to talk to you guys, and pretty soon it'll be a way for you to talk back to me, which is going to be great. Now, at the, in the beginning of the show... When I first started, there was a way for you to talk back to me. There was a way for you to call in. I didn't like that system. So I'm working on a new system because I want some of these things, I want to hear your opinion. Like the whole gambling thing, I would love to hear what you got to say about that. I would love to hear you. And I want, I want you to share with the audience. So I'm working on ways for you to, and I, and I think I got it. I just have to, like, ooh, JJ is going to probably fire me. <laughs> If I keep adding stuff on, like I got the, we got the video coming with the two cameras and this is me, right? It's, I'm terrible, y'all. Y'all don't even know. JJ knows. Y'all don't even know. Now I'm talking about adding on the call-in piece of it just to add more to her plate because she's producing, you know, like as if she would need more on her plate. <laughs> she going to fire me. I'm going to get fired from my own company. <laughs> but, but. We want to make it. We want to make it a really great show. So um, I'm working on a way right now for the people to be able to call in, and because um, we, I had it before. The thing I didn't like about it is that people were calling in, and you could hear the phone ringing inside the show. Like I'd be like, "Oh crap, the phone is," and you could hear it. Like I could hear the phone. Then, then I'm like, "Oh my god, the phone is ringing inside my show." So that happened like twice. I was like, "Yeah, I can't use this service. I'm gonna have to figure out another way." And I thought I had I thought I had that through Block Talk Radio until they kept losing my episodes. I'm like, what is the problem with them? Like that sucks. Now yeah. now I realize though with using Block Talk, I probably can use it again because um I just have to figure out how to we might have to go ahead and get the um <laughs> which is what I wanna do anyway, get the uh Roadcaster Pro because I wanna get that anyway. I'm like, I told you I'm a geek for real. On the download, I'm a geek on the download, but um, being inside um, inside the studio, our internet band, our internet is better, so it's not like having a home internet too. So that could have been one. Of, they couldn't tell me what it was. They would tell me some bull crap that pissed me off. Um, so I just I canceled the service. Like, listen, I'm not gonna be sitting up here talking, my throat hurting for like an hour, and then y'all lose my whole episode. You can't tell me why. They couldn't tell me why they lost. It was like, oh, I should have did. I should have did something. I should have refreshed. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to know that? You know, you didn't tell me that. So I was a little bit pissed off with them. So I, I canceled the service. But now that I know that one of the things that's really important is that you have a really good internet connection. Inside here, we have great internet because we're inside of a building. And so, you know, when you're inside of a building, there's no um, poles outside. It's a T3, which is strong internet. Because they pay for strong internet. Because you got to be able to... We're inside the Paradigm Work Hub. More than just me is on the internet. Everybody in here is on the internet. So you got to be able to accommodate all of these people who are on the internet at one time. So <clears throat> we got really good internet service here. So I am going back to figure out how we can... Um, maybe I can go back to Block Talk. Now that I, you know, I'm working on I'm working on the call-in piece. I really want to do that. I really want to be able to have people call in and and voice the opinion. Like, I did one show on Blog Talk, and a man called in from Tennessee. I was talking about the heartbeat bill, and he just called in. And I was like, oh, I got a caller. <clears throat> I, even put the, I didn't even put the information out there. He was just searching for things to talk, to listen to, I guess, and I popped up in the feed as live, and he called right on in with his, but the answer he gave was ridiculous. But I talked to him anyway. From, he was somewhere in Tennessee. I was like, oh, I had my first caller. Anyway, let me keep it moving, because I could <clears throat> yeah, I know I can talk a lot, but I can't talk a lot because my throat is hurt. It's starting to hurt now, and I need some water. All right, so let's talk about a couple of events, and then I'm going to close it out. So, Toastmasters, I'm always talking about Toastmasters, right? That's because it's a lot of meetings. 
here, here's, here's why this is important. If you're trying to figure out how to become a better presenter, how to become a better spree- speaker, how to just communicate with confidence, Toastmasters would be a good good place for you to start, right? Not only do you get a chance to, to, to network with other people, um, it's a good way for you to hone that skill, build that muscle. That's why I'm always announcing Toastmasters. And not only that, I told y'all, I got a job from going to a Toastmaster meeting. I sure did. That's when I be, That was the first time I was called a coach. I was a job coach. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, there's a Toastmaster meeting this evening, seven o'clock to eight eight fifteen p.m. in Centerville Community Center, located at thirty twenty five Bethany Church Road in Snellville. It's free to the public, so if you want to go out, go ahead. Seven o'clock to eight fifteen, Centerville Community Center, thirty twenty five Bethany Church Road. Check it out. Shut up and write. If you listen, they don't want you to come there talking. If you talking about you want to be a writer, then go write. That's what people, you want to be a podcaster, then start podcasting. You want to be a filmmaker, make a film. That is that simple. Like all this, I got to figure. No, you ain't got to. You just got to do it. Figure it out as you go. You want to write a book, write the book. Just write it, and then figure it out. But people will make all kinds of ex. You you. <clears throat> I was at an event last night, right? The lady said, and then I'm going to say to her, you ain't even serious. Because what she said was, she said, I need to start a podcast. So I said, that's wonderful. This is a powerful platform. You should you should do that. She said, uh, I said, as a matter of fact, I'm doing a lunch and learn next Thursday. She said, is it, do I have to pay? I was like, well, no, act, well, yeah, but not a lot. She was, I mean, I was going to pay, but I really didn't want to pay. Then you really don't want to be a podcaster. Because you really got to spend some money. So that's the thing. If you're not willing to invest in what you're trying to do, then stop saying you want to do that because you really don't. Because here's, here's what I've learned. When you really want to do something, you do it. Right? That's just the bottom line. When you really, really, really want to do something, you will do it. Nobody has to coerce you into doing it. Nobody has to force you into doing it. Nobody has to guilt you into doing it. You do it. Nobody has to wake me up every morning except for God and say, Audrey, Go to that studio and do that show. Nobody. Know why? Because I want to do it. I'm here. I'm here when it's cold. I'm here when it's raining. You hear me on... There have been times that I was sick as a dog and I did this show. And sometimes I can tell you, man, I feel terrible. I'm going to do this show. Because I love what I do. So nobody has to force me to do anything. But anyway, I said all that to say, there's an event tonight. <laughs> It's called Shut Up and Write. <laughs> right? Right. It's going to be at 7 Coffee and Wine, located at 3182 Steve Reynolds Boulevard, and that's in Duluth. If you are talking about you want to write, they said come on out. Whether you want to write a book, a blog, a script, an essay, a dissertation, a resume, a melody, a, a melody or a poem, or just everyday work so you're invited to write it with them. No one will see what you've written or give unsolicited advice. Instead of just thinking about writing, come and get some real writing done. <laughs> Shut up and write. At 7 o'clock, they do, they're going to do a quick intro. 7.10 to 7.25, they start the writing. 7.30, the time of starts. Write for one hour. This is, this is what I call structure right here, baby. You want to write? Shut up and write. From 7.30 to 8.30, you're going to write. At 8.30, they end and they have a chat. They take it off. They take off, the, and the cafe closes at midnight. So you can stay after eight thirty because they close at midnight. But yeah, you can socialize for the rest of the time, right? Because people, I want to write. I'm gonna write a book. You ain't write a sentence yet. Get out of here. I'm. A, I've, I've been mean to write this book. Then write one word. You didn't mean to do nothing. But say what you just said. I talk about it. All right. You like board games? Happy hour board game. That sounds like I one. Like that. Yeah, that's like, what's the game we play? That game you got we played. Catch, I love to play. Catchphrase. Catchphrase. I'm a, like I like games. And I'm about to start my game night. Like I love it's games. Game night. We should start it's game, game night, right? Be fun. I love games. Like I'm a big kid at heart. Like I like games. I like pinball machines. I like uh uh, uh centipede. Like that's one of my favorite games. I like air hockey. Like people don't like to play me air hockey because I beat them. Um, my mother, you know why my mother bought me and my brother an air hockey table when we, she bought us a pool table and she bought us an air hockey table and I remember I was dating this guy and we used to always go to the arcade and one night we went to the arcade and he played me an air hockey and I beat him like twice he didn't like that I felt bad too because I felt like I was so unfeminine at that point 
I didn't feel girlish at all because I beat him twice. I think his ego was bruised. So we never played air hockey again after that. Oh, gosh. And we kind of dated on and off for years. And, yeah, he would never play air hockey with me again. But anyway, board, board night. Happy hour board night. Board games. So if you want to go out to happy hour board games tonight, 6.30 to 10 p.m. They're going to be at Old Charlie's, located at 8.30 Lawrenceville, Swanee Road in Lawrenceville. It's free. You know, you can buy your food from Old Charlie, so check it out. That sounds like a lot of fun. I love playing games. We went to Florida. We was in Destin with my friend Lori. Oh, my God. Lori had a birthday. She had a, it was her birthday. It was like 15 of us in this house. Right? It was like 15, right? 15 of us, yeah. It was about yeah. 15, this house was, when I tell you off the chain, we were on a, it was a beautiful house in Destin, Florida. She had rented it for her birthday. The house had three floors and an elevator. And the main, the, the top floor was a bedroom. It was a, the whole, the whole house on the, the whole, the house was amazing. So I'm talking about 15 people. So it had enough room to accommodate everybody. Everybody had a bed to sleep in. That's that how big nice. the house was. And the beach was right across the street. Like literally, you walk out the door, turn the corner, walk 100 mm-hmm. feet. You were at the beach. Yeah. It was hot as sin down there, though, y'all. I ain't even gonna lie. I want to say something else, but this is a family show. It was so hot. I told Lori, I'm about to go back. I'm about to catch on fire. It's so hot out here. <laughs> like, I'm not a beach person. Like, not in, not in the summertime. Like, yeah. maybe in the fall. I had a chance for like a year. Oh, my God. So, it was so hot. Like, the only thing we shown was our legs, and my feet was buried in the sand. So, me and Ginger had like these tan lines on our leg. Looked like we had those pantyhose, like knee highs. That's how dark it, it was crazy. Lori loves it. She loves the water, though. So she was out there every day. I'm like, Lori, it's too hot. I can't be out here in this heat like this. But she loved it. We had a great time. But we played so many games. Yes. At that pl- at, at her birthday, it was an, a wonderful one. I mean, we should do that again. Yeah, we are going to do it again. That was it, yeah. so much fun. Like, for real, I need to call her and tell her that. I mean, we're on Tuesday, so I need to talk okay. to her about that. <laughs> like, we need to. That was beautiful. But anyway, um... You want to go play some board games, that's tonight. Um, have some fun. 6.30, it starts off. And again, that's at Old Charlie's, located at 8.30 Lawrenceville, Swanee Road in Lawrenceville. All right, listen, that's all I got for you. I'm going to my last song. I'll be back after this last song to give you my inspiration of the day, and then I'm going to close it out for the weekend. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah. Are you, yeah, yeah. Never under yard, never ever on, forever on Check my repertoire, check my repertoire, don't check me now Lessons, checks involved, I've been feeling like I'm next to God Next to next to God, next to next to God Never not, never under yard, never ever on, forever on Check my repertoire, check my repertoire, don't check me now Lessons, checks involved, I've been feeling like I'm next to God Next to next to God, next to next to God Never fall, never ever fall, never ever stone or rolling stone Till I'm in rolling stone, bet I'm close to gold Need a place, need a safer bank, I've been safe and change, I need some space, chatting in my face, get from around my way, ayy, what you saying, where you at now, I swear that once I leave my city, never coming back down, way from pushing tapes to glowing up around the map now, real hot summer, keep my cool, I never act out, ayy, yes indeed, recognize what you want, might not be what you need, won't take control of me, but I got mouths to feed, hustle smart, nah, hard to still get it by any means, please. Never not, never under yard, never ever on, forever on. Check my repertoire, check my repertoire, don't check me now. Let's just check some I've been feeling like I'm next to God, so next to God, next to next to God. Never not, never under yard, never ever on, forever on. Check my repertoire, check my repertoire, don't check me now. Let's just check some I've been feeling like I'm next to God, so next to God, next to next to God. Get up, had to get it by myself. Bad decisions had me living down in hell. Paranoia, so I keep it by my belt. Losing sleep, I know this lean won't be no help Nah, it's no contest, S on my chest Whole squad gon' flex, yeah, you know that's set They had mentioned competition, I'm here like, what's that? Heard your last two tracks, you're not eating all that Pocket swole on me, since 15, haters been tryna roll on me Move smarter, no drama, you know, homie Whole team round me, ready on go, homie Yeah, you know, homie, ayy Never under yard, never ever on, forever on Check my repertoire, check my repertoire, don't check me now Let's just check some I've been feeling like I'm next to God So next to God, next to next to God Never not, never under yard, never ever on, forever on Check my repertoire, check my repertoire, don't check me now Let's just check some I've been feeling like I'm next to God So next to God, next to next to God
back, welcome back. So listen, guys, I'm about to get off this thing and get ready to go. But before I go, um, be sure to check us out. We're going to be here Wednesday doing a podcast and lunch and learn at 12 o'clock next Wednesday, February 5th. Can you believe it? Next Friday always already be the 5th of the month. Like, literally, like, I can't even believe it. Anyway, we'll be here next Wednesday at the Paradigm Work Hub doing a podcast and lunch and learn. For more information about that, go to Noise www.noisemedia.us and click on events and you'll see all the events there that all the upcoming events i got a bunch of them some i haven't even added yet but um we're gonna be doing a lunch and learn here from 12 to 2 so if you want to learn more about podcasts and how to leverage it and how to use it to help you grow your business you can um i have a lot of like podcasting is so powerful and i talk about it all the time because it really is but i have so many workshops that i have coming up about podcasts and how to leverage it at leverage podcasting as an author how to leverage podcasting if you are a nonprofit or a ministry. Um, just a lot of workshops coming up about this. So, but this Thursday, this coming, I mean, this coming Wednesday from twelve to two, we'll be doing a lunch and learn, and it's going to talk about how to leverage it for your business. So, come out and check us out. Go to uh, Noise Media www noise media us noise media us and you can register there. It's free to our members, to our noise maker, um, to our NBA members. That's the noise. Make a business alliance. For more information about that, too, go to go to the website. Become a member of the Noise Make a Business Alliance. This you won't regret it. This alliance is all about helping you get a visibility for your company. A lot of people don't know how to do that, and they and they, if they do, they're not consistent with it. So one of the ways we help you do that is by putting a link in our newsletter, the Noise Report that goes out every Friday, right? You also get a spotlight in Noisemaker Magazine that's coming out in March. You also get your, your interview on the podcast network. You also get your interview on the TV network. Like, we're about creating creating visibility for you. If you don't have time to create visibility, we do, right? We're going to be adding people to our team this year. I, I can't overwork your yet. She's going to fire me. So, we're going to have to add some more people. We added people to the team, but because we we like we already have people that's gonna lay the magazine out, right? We don't have to worry about that part. But um, we I know what it means to, to create visibility, to to create press and all those things. So we want to help you do that. If you don't have the time to 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 put your link out every Friday, we do. It's gonna go in the newsletter. If you don't have your time to have your your podcast interview, you know, distributed across all these different platforms because you don't want to start a podcast. Hey, become a noisemaker. You know, when you become a noisemaker and become a part of the Noisemaker Business Alliance, this is what we do for you. This is how we help you. And trust me when I tell you to have a magazine, a print magazine that's print and digital, come out once a month and there's a link to your to your website in the back oh, of the yes. magazine in the directory. When you go and look at that feed, yeah, I know. I could be caught I could be charging thousands of dollars. I know that. I know that. And some people won't even take me seriously because I'm not charging thousands of dollars. But I can help more people. I can help more people charge at $57 a month. I know I can. I know what I can charge. I know my worth. You ain't got to tell me, oh, you're not charging enough because you don't know your worth. I do. I know my worth. I know. But I also know that God gave me these gifts for a reason. And it wasn't to overcharge people. So, and it has nothing to do with how I feel about who I am. It has nothing to do about I don't know how much I'm worth. It has nothing to do with that. I know. I know someone says, oh my God, she doesn't know her worth. I do. Right, you do. I didn't know my worth. So anyway, I wanted to just share that with you guys. But here, here's my inspiration for today because this is a good one. So before I give you what it is, I'm going to tell you a story real quick. So I have a Fitbit that I hardly ever take off. I take it off to take a bath, right? I sleep in it. I walk around with it all day. Here's the thing. I don't walk a lot all day. That's the problem <laughs> because I sit down at the computer mostly all day. So I'm in. This, me and my husband, my husband and I are in these Fitbit challenges, right? And so, my husband walks about 8,000 steps a day. But you can see everybody what they walk. So, it's this one guy. His name is Dev. Dev B. Uh, he walks about 15,000, 20,000 steps a day. So, I had to text him, like, what are you doing? Like, how do you get this many steps in? Right? I don't know what is he doing. He's, like, got all these steps. Like, he beat us every week. And I was like, okay, I am going to not be. I wasn't in last place. I was in next to last. Right? I'm not. I'm going to be in the top 10. It's the top, top. You can be in the top. There's only 10 people in the group. So I want to be in the top five, right? Which means I got to get a lot of steps in because these people are not playing. You know, right? so by the end of the week, they up to like 30,000, 40,000 steps. I'm like, whew, I'm just at 17,000, maybe 15, right? So I'm sucking. But anyway, I realized I have to get more steps in. So inside of Paradigm, we have the option to take the stairs right. 
or take the elevator. Of course I'm taking the elevator, but I don't want to take the stairs, right? But yesterday, after I had so graciously lost, I was came in next to last. I was number nine. I beat somebody. I wasn't last. But I can't I wanna be in the top five. I don't wanna be in the bottom five. I'm at the bottom of the five, right? So when I saw this quote, I was like, this is a good quote. So I took the stairs this morning. I started taking the stairs yesterday. I took the stairs this morning. Here's a crazy thing. When I took the stairs yesterday, I was going down to get some lunch. So I didn't have my bag with all the stuff in it. So it was easy to go up and down the stairs. Well, this morning I took the stairs with the bag, which is very heavy. I'm like, why did I take the and I got bad knees. Why did I take the bag, take the stairs this morning with the bag? Because the bag is heavy. But I made it. I pushed through. That's the other thing. So here's my quote for today. And this is a good quote. Right? There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs. <laughs> Let me say that again. There is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs, y'all. I know. Put the stuff on your back and take the stairs. I get it. I know we want to take the elevator. It's easy, it's mm -hmm. quick, it's painless. Yeah. But the stairs is what's going to get you to success. Now, if I don't want to come in last, I need to take the stairs yes. for the rest of the week. I do. So, that's my quote. But I ain't only, that was so clear. I don't even have to elaborate on that. You get it. Thank you again for listening. I'll be back again on Monday, God willing. Appreciate you so much for listening. If you missed any episode of the show, go to goodmorninggwinnett.com and listen to the past episodes. Also, be sure to download the app from the App Store. If you got an iPhone, I'm in the Apple Store. If you got an Android phone, I'm in the Google Play Store. You can download the app from both stores. Now, I don't know. I don't know anybody with a Microsoft phone. <laughs> I'm sure they got them, but I don't know anybody. And I don't have an Apple there, unfortunately. But anyway, if you have an Alexa in your house, go on your iPad or your tablet and go to the Skill Store download the Good Morning With Net scale, and then listen to me on the weekend. If you don't have time to listen to me during the day, you can listen to the, the, the latest episode on the, any day you want. All you got to do is say Alexa. You got to say open, though. You can't say play. Like So Alexa, I, I thought I set it up to say play, but must I must have. Because I created the scale for that. So now when you go to Alexa, Alexa, open Good Morning With Net, and you're going to hear my voice. I'm going to come on in and be talking to you about you know, what you missed. The today. So if you miss an episode and you don't want to go to the, to the computer and listen, or you don't want to listen on your cell phone but you have an Alexa in your house, just go to Alexa. Alexa, open Good Morning with Nat, and she will open it and play my voice. Ain't that something? Technology is a monster, y'all. But again, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll be back again on Monday. God willing, until next time, make it a great day. Bye now. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you missed an episode, go to www.goodmorninggwinnett.com to catch up. If you liked this episode, subscribe to the show now and share it with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit www.noisemedia.us.